Hi students, welcome to the new unit of trigonometry. So this will be lesson 8a, um, angles and angles measure in radians. Okay, so um, you were taught this in grade 11, but we'll kind of quickly review this. Um, an angle in stand position has its center at the original, uh, at the origin, sorry. Uh, the origin's right here. This is where the y and x axis meet and its initial arm along the positive x-axis. So this line right here, that's the initial arm here. Okay, so uh, the, the angle will always start from the positive x-axis. Uh, and then uh, has a terminal arm that falls somewhere else. So for example, this would be a terminal arm, which would mean there would be an angle formed right here. Okay, um, so there's positive and negative angles. So if you go this direction, we'll call that positive. So that's clockwise, so cardiac clockwise is a positive angle. And if you go the opposite direction, so if you go this way, that's a negative angle. Notice that both of them start on the positive x-axis. So the angle always starts from there. All right. So in which quadrant is 400 degrees? Well, how much is a full circle? A full circle is 360, right? So 400 degrees, you would go 360, and then you'd go 40 more. So this angle would be in quadrant 1. Often we use Roman numerals to um, represent quadrants. Quadrant 1, uh, negative 65 degrees. So again, you would start here, right? Because you're negative, you're over here. You go negative 65. Notice that you would not reach the next... Um, quadrant because every quadrant is 90 degrees, correct? So negative 65 degrees would be about there. So you would finish in this quadrant. And just a quick review, quadrant one's over here, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And oh, maybe I'd draw that. So this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. So Negative 65 degrees would fit into quadrant 4 because it would be right here. So this would be quadrant 4. Okay, uh, 700 degrees. Well, again, you would travel the full 360, right? All right, well, if you want to figure out exactly where we are, just keep going 90 degrees up and find out where we are. So 360, 360 plus 90 is 450, plus 90 is 540, plus 90 is 6. 30, right? So 630, 720. So your 700 degrees would be right there. So it would be almost two full revolutions. So again, you would fall in quadrant four. And negative 150 degrees. So again, you would be in the negative side. So you'd go here, negative 150 would be here because this would be negative 180, right? This would be negative 90, negative 180, negative 150 right about there. So that one would be in quadrant three. All right, now, for a radiant measure of an angle, okay, so this is a little bit different. You've been taught how to measure angles in degrees um, and so on, and we'll talk about a little bit what degrees and radians are in class. But let's uh, look at it a little bit differently. The angle uh, degrees is the angle uh, between two lines, basically, the, the degrees between two lines. The radiant measure of an angle is measuring basically the circumference of the circle uh, if the radius was one. Okay, so, and that's why we call it the unit circle, and we'll get to that soon, because the radius will be 1. Alright, so, the for formula for the circumference of a circle is circumference equals 2 pi r. You learned that way back in probably grade 5 or 6, circumference circle equals 2 pi r. Well, the unit circle has a radius of 1. So, if I was to put a 1 in here, the circumference would be equal to 2 pi, right? So if I plug in 1, you get 2 pi. So the circumference of a circle is 2 pi. 2 pi is approximately 6.2831, blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's just double pi. All right. Um, so 2 pi can be represented exactly using 2 pi, but it also could be represented an approximation of 6.28. You could add as many decimals as you want. All right, so this means the distance traveled from the initial arm. So imagine this circle. We'll call this radius of 1. Okay, so if I was to travel from here all the way around and back to the starting point, 
I would have traveled 6.28 blah, 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 or 2 pi radians. And that's how we're going to measure radians. So radians is giving you the distance, the total distance of the arc on the angle that you're working with. Right? So if you only had a little bit of an angle, you would give this distance and that would give you the angle. All right. So let's do a little comparison of uh, revolutions and degrees and radians, things like that. All right. One revolution. Well, I hope you guys know that that is 360 degrees. All right. Well, we've just covered that if you go all the way around, right, if you go all the way around the circle, you would have traveled 2 pi. So that would be 2 pi radians. And this is the decimal approximation, right? This is the decimal approximation of two radians, two pi. Uh, you can plug that in your calculator, same thing. All right, half of a revolution. Well, half of a revolution would be 180 degrees. Well, considering a, a full revolution is two pi, what would a half of two pi be? Well, I hope you guys can tell it's just pi. So pi radians. So if you were to travel exactly half the distance around a circle, if the, if the radian is one, therefore, sorry, uh, the radius, sorry, is one, then this distance would be pi, exactly. And again, this the pi is 3.14, blah, blah, blah. All right, a quarter of revolution. So a quarter of revolution would represent this angle right here, right? So that would be 90 degrees. And Again, in reference to the full circle is 2 pi, if you were to break that up into 4, so you divide this by 4, you would get pi over 2, which would make sense in this case too, because if this is pi, this would be pi over 2, half of it. And pi over 2, again, all I did was simply divide this by 2, and you get 1.57, blah, blah, blah. All right? And the last one, 1 300th, no, 360th of a revolution, so very, very small, small value, that's actually one degree, exactly one degree. And in radiant measure, well, you're dividing this thing in 360 pieces, therefore you divide it by 360, and you get pi over 180 radians. And not that it's that important, but this would be the value of radians, so if you're going just one degree around this circle, you're only traveling 0.02-ish radians around, okay? And something that I'll make reference to uh, often enough, one radians, so notice that 1.6-ish, whoops, wrong button, 1.6-ish radians is uh, about 90 degrees. So one radiant exactly, so if you were to go 1.0, is actually 180 over pi degrees, which is 57.3. I often use the approximation of 60 degrees because there are 6.3 radians around a circle, right? So divide that by six, you get about one. So that would be about 60 degrees. So I'll often use one radians about 60. I'll, I might use the word little less than 60. All right, so now we're gonna just convert any degree into radians, and it's actually quite easy. Uh, it's a simple calculation, and we can go back if we need to, we'll do that in class. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your degree, you're going to multiply that by pi over 180, and that'll give you your radians. Okay, so let's do a few just to see what it looks like. So we have 30 degrees, we're going to go 30 degrees times, I'm going to use the dot for times so we don't have x's all over the place pi over 180 and when you multiply that you get 30 pi over 180 and you can simplify this quite a bit notice that the zeros cancel out and then all you have to do is simplify 3 over 18 and that's 1 sixth so your answer is pi over 6 so this is the exact degree representation or so radiant representation of 30 degrees so those we we call those equivalent in different measure in different units. All right, so same thing again. I'll repeat it. I don't think I'm going to go over every step every single time. So we have 225 degrees times pi over 180. And if you want to simplify that completely, which we will right off the bat, you get 5 pi over 4. And 720, you might be able to do this without calculating it, but we'll 
prove the calculation, notice that 720 is two full circles. Well, if one circle is 2 pi, two full circles is 4 pi. But we'll prove this using some math. So 720 times pi over 180. And if you simplify 720 over 180, you get 4 pi. Okay, so now if we want to convert radians to degrees, well, I hope you can think that it would be about the same. Looking back at this formula here, if I want to, if I want to get degrees by itself on the other side, I'll bring the 180 up top, I'll bring the pi on the bottom. So really all you get is you get radians times 180 over pi equals degrees. Okay, an easy way to remember that is if, if you have radians and you want to get rid of the pi because the, the radians has pi's in it all the time because the circumference is 2 pi r. So if you want to get rid of the pi, rid of the radians, you divide by pi. And that's an easy way to remember that you need degrees. Okay, so same thing. We'll do it again. So we have, I'm doing blue this time, change it up. So you have 2 pi over 3 times 180 over pi. So you notice that the pi's are going to cancel out. That's your hint that you're going to get degrees, right? And, and then you can do some simplification. Uh, notice that 180 divided by 3, that's 60. So 60 times 2 is 120 degrees. Okay, so often you're going to see radians represented as a decimal. Uh, remember the last page? You can quickly look at it if you'd like. The last page we had 2 pi is 6.23, or sorry, 6.28. We had pi is 3.14, we had pi over 2 is 1.57. So this is a decimal representation of radians. Nothing different than what we've done already. So we've got 1.6 times 180 over pi. This is just one of those odd occasions where there's no pi in the answer, but you're still trying to get rid of the pi because there is a, kind of a understood pi value within there. Okay, so then you're going to calculate that, you're going to multiply that in your calculator, and this would give you, oops, this would give you uh, 91.7 degrees. This should make, should make sense if you look back at your last page, because we said that pi over 2 is 1 point, uh, sorry, 1.57, yeah, and pi over 2 is actually exactly 90 degrees. So. This is a little bit more than 1.57, therefore it's a little bit more than 90 degrees. Just to try to give you a, uh, some relationship between the, two, between the two. All right, last one. Quickly, 7 pi over 4 times 180 over pi. Again, easy to see the pi's cancel out. Do some quick simplification. Okay, and you can, you have, you'd have a calculator most likely for a question like this and you would get 315 degrees. All right, for the last example, um, what if the angle, uh, sorry, what if the radius is not one? And that's most likely the case. Not every uh, circle has a radius of one. Now, some do, but again, very few. So we represent this relationship between angle and radius, uh, sorry, arc length and radius over here. Okay, so if the angle is theta, seen that before, arc length we often represent with s, and the radius is 1. So notice that the radius is 1, I'll go by the formula over here, if the radius is 1, the arc length is the angle. But if the radius isn't 1, this is the relationship that's presented here. Okay, um, again, and we've noted this already, if there's no unit attached to the angle, we are going to assume it's in radians. So unless there's a degree there, you know what this is in radians. Okay, one little thing to mention about this formula. You must have angle in radians to use this formula. You cannot use degrees in this formula. Okay, this is a relationship between arc length and angle, which means this is only a relationship if it's in radians. And uh, applying this question, or this formula, uh, a bicycle tire has a radius of 0.5 meters. Okay, so we know that r is equal to 0 0.5 meters. And it travels a distance of 1.5 meters, which means that'll be the arc length. Because if you think about it, if you travel 1.5 meters on a bike, that tire will go around the tire 
1.5 meters, which means arc length in this case is 1.5 meters. The question in this is determine the rotated angle in degrees. So how much did that tire rotate to travel 1.5 meters? Well, at the beginning it's pretty easy because all you have is to plug into the formula like that. So you divide each side by 0.5 to solve for the angle and your answer is 3. Okay. Notice that this is a radiant measure because you're using a formula that only has radians in it. So now I need to convert this angle in radians into degrees. The reason I got to do that, I asked it in the question. So now we go theta equals 3 and we multiply by, hope you can remember, 180 over pi, right? Because I'm trying to get rid of the radians, so I'm getting rid of pi. So uh, the answer would be, and again, you're going to take out your calculator to do this. You're going to go theta equals and plug it in to get 171.887. And you're going to put your degrees, make sure you put that to indicate your answers in degrees. And that's how much you would have rotated. Again, just for reference, 3 radians is really close to pi. So it's a little bit less than 180 degrees. This is a little bit less than 180. Good luck, guys, and get ready for lots of trig because we're doing this until exercise 20.